Now is the time to add our Windows Server by WMI protocol. After we install PRTG and talk more about sensors and so on, is the time to adding our devices. In this section, we're going to add Windows Server by WMI, SNMP, Cisco devices, firewall, ES6i, and vCenter, and so on. I want to let you know how you can add whatever device in your PRTG server. And here, as you can see, you can enable SSL encryption for PRTG website. Just click on switch to SSL and it will tell you switch to SSL now. That's great. It takes about a few minutes to install SSL certificate. Keep in mind that if you want to use PRTG across the internet, it's the best to use SSL certificate. You should buy a certificate for your PRTG server or your domain. So as you can see, now we use SSL, which is not secure because it's not the real certificate. You should assign your domain certificate here. You can easily issue the certificate. And here it will prompt you for notification. You can do allow or block. For our lab, we can keep it blocked because it's nagging actually all the time sending the notification here. So I will do and click block. So we'll go to device. PRTG at the first time try to discover all of your network, especially the VLAN that PRTG belongs to. As you can see here, we can see the Linux operating system. Actually, they're not Linux operating system. So here, as you can see, some of the sensors are unknown. Great, we'll do a refresh for these sensors actually to initiate this sensor again. So sometimes when you switch to SSL, like we done before here, some of the sensor is going to be with question mark. That means this sensor has not received data for imagine four minutes or whatever. So most of the time it needs a few seconds for those sensor to be back again. Otherwise you should restart your PRTG service on your administrative tools. So as I say, it takes time to get back the sensors. So here we have servers, which is under Windows group. Here we right click and we'll say add device. We want to add it under the server window section. So let's call it remote server and the IP address and we'll choose this icon. So for auto discovery level, we'll use a standard auto discovery. We have no auto discovery that you should add sensors manually. And this is actually a great option for Windows or Cisco switches that you can use a standard auto discovery and detailed auto discovery and auto discovery with the specific device template. You can choose, for example, this is a DNS server or something like VMware vCenter or ESXi or whatever. Based on the template that you will use, it's going to give you uh, the sensor that you want. So we'll go ahead and use a standard auto discovery, which is recommended. And for a schedule, we have once hourly, daily, or weekly. We could say do a rediscover, for example, daily. If you have a device that say has a lot of disks that come in and out, you can rediscover it every so often. But keep in mind, rediscover more, it will overload your PRTG server. And here is for configuring WMI, credential for Windows system. We'll click on inherit from the parent. Actually, you can do this WMI or SNMP or whatever in PRTG in your parent level. That means for the group of servers, you can manage it only once. For example, I can do here for servers group and add the credential, for example, my domain credential, and all of my servers are going to use this WMI credential. We will say remote SRV for our server that we want to monitor. So we'll say administrator and the password. So great. 
we will leave the rest of configuration to default and we'll hit OK. So at the bottom, we can see remote server. So we will wait a few minutes to that sensor to be added to this server. So auto discovery, it's overload your PRTG server. And in most cases, it doesn't recognize the sensor that you want for a specified devices. I just wanted to show you how you can use rediscover, but I strongly recommend you that you don't use it because it's overload and most of the cases that you are wasting your time. So by WMI, you can monitor your exchange Windows server or your domain server or your backup server or whatever. And by the way, here is my Vim backup course, which is the great course, actually is high rated course, and you can learn Vim backup and recovery by this course. So here we'll add the sensor. We'll say CPU, Windows, and WMI. We'll say Windows load CPU or Windows process. So we'll add and we'll create the sensor. So we'll click on this icon, which is a scan now to scan the already added sensor here. So we'll go to the sensor here to see what will happen. Again, we'll wait a few seconds to see the result. And in the meanwhile, we'll click on a scan now. Sometimes it takes about one or two minutes. We'll wait to see what will happen. So actually, after a while, we can see CPU load, there is nothing to monitor with this sensor. It cannot recognize the last scan, last up or down, and actual uptime is not applicable. There is a problem when you're using WMI. So the problem it could be with the Windows firewall or your antivirus. You have to be careful when you want to use Windows credential WMI or Windows SNMP. You should keep in mind that configure your antivirus or your WMI based on the protocol that you need. For example, for SNMP, you should enable 161 port through the Windows firewall. Great. So here we have the antivirus Kaspersky Let's say exit to see actually the problem. And again, in firewall, we should turn off the Windows firewall. That's the case. You can configure your Windows firewall to only accept SNMP or WMI protocol. So again, we'll scan the sensor to see what will happen. Now, as you can see, the values for these channels, it changed here. And again, we'll do a scan now. So that's great. So again, when you use WMI or SNMP on your Windows server, you should configure your Windows firewall or your antivirus to respond to SNMP or WMI port. So again, we'll go to the device. And here, will add another sensor. So we can imagine this result for actually recommended sensor, it was for Windows Firewall or antivirus. We can do a recommend now, or here we can easily add another sensor for Windows Server. Again, we will say this usage, Windows and WMI, and here we will add WMI free disk space. We'll add it. And again, create. So again, we'll add another sensor, which is going to be for memory, Windows, and WMI. WMI memory. You can use the second one for your Hyper-V server. And again here, we'll do a scan now.
Here, as you can see, these sensors monitor our free disk, which is partition C. That's great. And here we have the channel for total capacity, free space, and downtime. The another one it was for memory. So on the sensor, if you hold the cursor, it will show you the pop-up for the sensor status, which is going to be last scan, last up and down. And here you can see the great graphs here. That's great. Again, keep in mind that over using of WMI, it will overload your TRTG server. Try to use SNMP protocol instead of WMI in your Windows servers. And here on group level, in Windows Server here, we can specify the WMI for all of the servers that we want. You can do it for your SNMP WMI or your ESX size or whatever. Actually, it helps you to add several servers or ESX size or Linux servers at the one shot. So here we will specify the domain credential that those servers belong to. So here we will specify the domain and the username. and the password. Great. That means for this DC server, again, we can add the sensor by WMI. We'll say WMI and we'll add the free disk sensor. And we'll hit scan now again. Now, as you can see, we have a free disk sensor here for this server. So in your root level, you can easily configure your WMI or SNMP or your VMware credential or your Linux credential. It's very easy. That means it doesn't need that you add your entire devices manually here. So that's great. And again, for this server and this server, we can add whatever sensor that you want. So let's say for DC2, We'll add recommend now. We'll hit OK to see the result. So we'll wait a few minutes to see what will happen. So now we can see we have five sensor and 12 sensor here. Let's add them all. And again, we add this sensor. And here we'll do a scan now to see the sensors available here. Again, we'll do a scan now and we'll do a refresh. Great. Here we can see the page file. And again, here we can see the graph for that specified sensor. And again, here we can see the volume D and volume C and the total volume, the gigabyte network connection and Windows update status here. We can see we have a warning and it's been a long time we didn't update our DC2 server. So in today's lesson, we learned how we can easily monitor our Windows server by the protocol of WMI. And again, I should mention that don't try to overuse WMI protocol on your Windows server. It is strongly recommend you that you use SNMP for your Windows servers.